how to add components in a blueprint asset with C++ in Unreal. Even though it's not that complicated to do, finding the way to do it can be a little bit tricky, so that's why I'm going to show it to you today, and that way you'll be able to build your blueprint hierarchies directly by code. So let's get to it. So as usual, I'm in a pretty empty header file, and we're gonna start with today with the forward declaration. So here they are, we need two forward declaration because we need two different classes. We first need the class parent of all the components we're going to add to our blueprint. So in our case, it's gonna be the using component component, which is the parent class of all the components that have a transform inside a blueprint. And then we also need the USCS node, which is the class of the components, but inside the blueprint asset, not inside the blueprint instance, because the way it works, Unreal, before spawning an instance of the blueprint, it only has a bunch of nodes that contains all the data of all the components that are part of that blueprint. But when instancing the blueprint, Unreal is going to create all the components of that blueprint based on the nodes that are inside the blueprint asset. So since we want to add components inside the blueprint asset and be able to save them, we need to go through the nodes to be able to do that. But using the nodes is a little bit complicated. It's not that straightforward to set all the different settings that we want to set onto them. So the way we're going to do that instead is by creating a component. So we're going to have a component created somewhere. We can set all the different variables that we need, all the different variables that we already know how to use onto that component. So we're going to have a component configured properly, and then we can simply copy paste all the different settings that we set onto that component onto to the node and that's what we're going to do because it's way simpler than modifying the node directly. So we're going to create a component, modify all the different settings that we want and then copy all those settings onto the node inside the blueprint asset. So good. Now for the functions, we're going to need a few of them. We need first a generic function that's going to create the nodes inside the blueprint asset and then copy the settings from the component we created onto those nodes. So I have my new function right here, add node to blueprint and this function is going to create a node component inside the blueprint asset. So we have to specify in which blueprint we want to create that node, so the blueprint path, the path of the blueprint we want to use. Then we're also going to fit it the scene component template we want to use to copy the setting from the scene component onto the node. So that's the scene component right here, the component template. And finally, the parent node name. So do we want to attach the new component onto the root node, or let's say another scene node that is inside the blueprint, or a camera component, or any other component? So that's why we can provide right here the parent node name so we can decide where to place the component in the blueprint hierarchy. And finally, I have the two usual parameters so I can return if the job was a success and if I have more information to give to the user. And as output, that function is going to return the node that was just created. So the USCS node, it's going to return that to the user so you can do whatever you want with it. If you don't want to do anything with it, well, you can just ignore it. That doesn't really matter. So yeah, that's the generic function that's going to add any type of components into the blueprint asset. Now we need a few other functions because I want to give you some little examples here and there. So we're going to create three different types of of component. And to do that, to make it simple, I'm just going to create three other functions. So I'm just going to scroll down a little bit. And here is the first function that's going to add a scene component to the blueprint. So add scene component to blueprint. And for that one, we just have to specify the blueprint path. The rest of the logic is going to be inside that function directly. And then the same to output variables as usual. And that function is going to create a new scene component completely, and then set all the different settings that we want to set onto that scene component, and then ask the generic function to create a node based on on that component that was just created. So we can create a scene component, place it wherever we want in the world, set all the different settings, so the visibility, the hidden in game, and whatever we want. And then we can take that scene component and create a node from it. That's what we're gonna do. And as output, we're just going to return the node that was created inside the blueprint. And finally, we're gonna create two other functions that are exactly the same, but to add a point light component and also a camera component into the blueprint. So instead of a scene component, we're gonna add some more complex component to show you how easy it is to to set all the different settings that you want onto those components. So here I have my add point light component to blueprint. Same thing, I'm just feeding it the blueprint path and it's going to return the node that was created inside the blueprint. And finally, add camera component to blueprint, feeding it the blueprint path and it's going to return the node that was created in the blueprint. And that's about it. Now it's time to jump in the CPP. And here, as usual, we're going to start with the include. So first, we need two includes. The first two includes are the one that's going to create the nodes inside the blueprint asset. So we need the SCS node because we want to create 
create a node and we also need the blueprint editor utils to be able to create the nodes inside the blueprint so those two includes are going to work together to create nodes inside the blueprint asset but then we need more includes we need one include for each of the different components that we want to add inside the blueprint so in our case today we want to add a point light component and also a camera component inside the blueprint so we need to include both of those and if you wanted to add a spotlight component you need to include it right here static mesh components skeletal mesh component or any other type of component you need to include them right here because if you want to set those settings you need to include the component so good okay so these are the includes we're gonna need today we just have to make sure that the unreal ed module is already included in the build.cs file so i'm gonna go right here and here it is so good i already have my unreal ed module included right here so that's good it's going to compile now we can go back in the cpp and look at the first function which is actually a pretty big one but it's not too too complicated the most complicated part is actually to attach the node to another node other than that creating the node and applying the properties is pretty straightforward so you'll see the first step is just going to be to load the blueprint so i'm going to do a static load object to access the blueprint we receive as input so the blueprint path i'm going to load the blueprint object the blueprint asset and then i'm going to validate to make sure that it's not equal to null if the blueprint is null well i'm not able to add any nodes to that blueprint so i'm just going to return right away so here i'm just going to make sure that the blueprint using the path we receive as input is valid if that blueprint is valid yes that's good we are ready to add a node to it and that's what we're gonna do let's create a node right here so inside the blueprint i'm just going to access the simple construction script which is the object responsible to build the blueprint the blueprint instance when you instance the blueprint so that's the simple construction script and in there we're going to create a new node which is then going to be used to create a real component in the blueprint but for now we have to create nodes so let's create a node right here the node can be anything so we're going to specify which class we want to use for the node and since we are using a component as template well we can simply take the class of that component so if it's a static mesh component we're going to create a static mesh component node if it's a skeletal mesh we're going to create a skeletal mesh node if it's a point light point light camera camera etc so using the class of the component we're going to create the proper node and then we also have to name the node to be able to find it later so i'm just going to reuse the same name that we're going to apply to the component so we are going to create a component we're going to name it and then i'm going to reuse that name to name my node in the blueprint asset perfect so we're creating a node inside the blueprint inside the simple construction script we're creating the node and that's going to give us the new node we just created perfect now we have a node inside the blueprint but it's not attached to anything it's just right there in the void it's floating somewhere now we have to attach it and that's actually the most annoying part so i'm just going to scroll down a little bit more and then we have to attach the node the first step i'm just going to check to see if the name we receive as input we can use it if it leads to a valid node so inside the simple construction script once again i'm going to try to find an scs node so it's going to look inside all the nodes that are currently inside the blueprint to find one that matches the name we receive as input if there's one that's awesome it's going to be super simple so we have the parent node right here which is the node that matches that name if there's one well that's easy we can simply use the parent node and say hey you have a new child node and it is the new node we just created that's it it's done the node is now attached to the parent node and that's it actually the node is created but the most annoying part is when we don't know the name of the parent node so if the name we receive as input is not valid there's no node with that name inside the blueprint we have to decide what do we want to do with the new node we created because that parent is not valid we cannot attach a node to that parent so what do we want to do the first thing i'm going to do here in the else i'm just going to access all the nodes that are currently inside the blueprint so we're going to decide based on all the nodes that are in there to which node we want to attach that new node so i have all my nodes right here and then i'm just going to add a few validation i'm just going to check okay is there any nodes in the blueprint because if there's no node in the blueprint well i just need to create a root node because there's nothing i cannot attach my new node to anything because there's nothing in there so here i'm just checking if there's any node in the blueprint if there's none super easy i'm just going to add the node directly inside inside the blueprint and that's going to create the root node for us that's just what it does so when you call add node it's simply going to take the node you did it and add it as a root but that's just going to work if you don't have any nodes inside the blueprint already so if you have some nodes well no luck you cannot do that same thing though if you have a node inside the blueprint but it's still the default scene root node so it's still the default node when you create the blueprint in unreal there's already a node in there it's a default scene root if that node is still there you can replace it using the add node so that function right here the add node function is going to either add a new root to your blueprint if there's no root already or also replace the default scene root if it's still there so if you replace the default scene root it's not going to replace it it's just not gonna work but if the default scene root is still there it's going to replace
replace the defaults in root using that new node you're trying to add to the blueprint. So it's either going to create a new root for you if you don't have a root or replace the default root if it's still using the default root. So that's why right here I'm going to check, okay, do we have nodes in the blueprint? If we don't, well, I'm going to create a new root. Or if we have nodes, I'm going to also check, okay, are we still using the default scene root? If it is, well, I also want to replace it using the new node. If you don't want to replace the default scene root with the new node, well, it's totally possible. You can simply remove that condition right here and it's not going to replace it because I'm just going to call the add node function in the case that we don't have any nodes in the blueprint. But in my case, I want to replace the default scene root because I wanted to show you how it works. So I'm going to replace the default scene root if it's still there. But if there's already nodes in the blueprint and the root node of the blueprint is not the default root. Well, in that case, I'm just going to attach the new node I just created to the first node of the blueprint. So I'm going to take the first node of the blueprint, which is the root. It's always the root. It's not going to be the default because I'm replacing the default right here, but there's a root in the blueprint. I'm going to attach the new node I just created to that root. So in short, we're creating a new node right here. We're trying to find a parent inside the blueprint. If the parent is valid, that's it. That's easy. You can simply attach a node to the parent. But if the parent node doesn't exist, if the name we receive doesn't match with any of the nodes that are currently in the blueprint, then we have to determine onto which node we want to attach a new node we just created. And that's what we're doing right here. So I'm either creating a new root inside that blueprint using the new node, or I'm attaching the new node to the root of the blueprint, the current root of the blueprint. That's as simple as that. It's a lot of lines, but it's not that complicated. So good. Now we created a node. It's finally attached to the blueprint. Now we just have to set the properties onto the node. And that's super easy. We can simply ask the editor engine to copy the properties from unrelated objects. That's just going to to copy all the properties from the component template that we receive as input. So the scene component, the light component, camera component, and it's going to copy all those properties onto the component template of the node. And hey, the name matches, so that's pretty good. So yeah, inside the node, there's a component template and that template is going to be used to create the real component once Unreal is going to instantiate that component in the game. Perfect, so now the node knows all the settings that it has to apply to the component and actually we're done. We just have to notify Unreal that we change the hierarchy of the blueprint. So in the blueprint editor utils, we can mark the blueprint as structurally modified. That's just going to tell Unreal that this blueprint was modified and then it has to refresh all the different hierarchies that are all over the place in the engine. So if you have the blueprint open, you can see the changes right away. And that's why we are calling this function to make sure that Unreal knows that we modified the structure of the blueprint and that's it. Now we can simply return the blueprint at the end, the new node we created. So here I'm going to say that that was a success, that I was able to add the node to the blueprint and I'm going to return the node at the end in the case that you want to do anything else with it. So good. So that was to create a node inside the blueprint asset. Now we just have to call this function to create all the different type of components we want to create today. And the first component, it's going to be the simplest one, it's going to be a scene component. So to create a scene component inside the blueprint, we're going to first create a component in the void. I'm going to create a scene component somewhere in the engine, doesn't matter. I just want a temporary scene component to be able to assign all my different properties to it and then use all those properties to copy them onto the node. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm creating a new object, a new scene component. I'm creating it as a child of the transient package, which Unreal uses to create objects that are just there temporarily, that are going to be deleted as soon as we don't need it anymore. We can name the component. So here is the name of my component, my scene component name. It's an awesome name. And then I'm just going to flag it as a transient package. So Unreal is just going to create the object and it knows that as soon as we don't need the object anymore, it's just going to delete it. That's just how it works. So yeah, good. We now have a component, a temporary component that we can apply all the settings we want to it. So I can set the location, rotation, scale, mobility, hidden in game, add tags, or anything else you're going to do with the component. Usually that's a real component that is in the engine. You can do anything you want with it. You can set all the settings that you want. And once you're done, your component is exactly the way you want it. You can simply create a node from that component. So add the node to blueprint, filling in the blueprint path that we receive as input, the component to use as a template. So the new component we just created right here, the name of the parent of that component. In my case, for my scene component, I'm not going to feed any value name, so I'm just going to leave it to none. You can feed it an empty string, you can feed it whatever you want, because as long as this name doesn't match any nodes in the blueprint, we're going to parent it to the root, and that's it. That function is going to return us the node that has all the different settings that we apply to this little component right here, and then we can return it at the end, and then Unreal is going to detect that we don't need that component anymore because we're not using it. It was just used inside this function, and it's going to delete 
create it automatically for us. So good, that's how we create a scene component inside the blueprint assets. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but for the point light component, and it's actually exactly the same thing. But instead of creating a scene component, we're going to create a point light component. As simple as that, same, we're going to create it as a transient package. You can name it, so my point light component name, that's a pretty nice name, and flag it as transient package. So Unreal knows that it has to delete that component later on. And then you can set all the different settings that you want. So the location, you can add a tag if you want, you can set the light color, the intensity, the source radius, the attenuation radius, and any other settings that you want to apply to a light component. And then you can simply add the node to a blueprint. The blueprint is going to be the one you receive as input. The component template is the component you just created right here. You're going to use that component settings to apply to the node. And then you can decide onto which component you want to attach that component. In my case, I'm going to attach it to my scene component. So I am using the same name as I'm applying to my scene component. So my light component should be a child of my scene component. And that's going to give me my node and I can return it at the end if I want to. And last function right here, it's going to be the exact same thing, but for the camera this time. So we're just going to create a camera component, same thing, transient package, you can name it. So my camera component, flag it as transient. We can set all the different settings that you want to apply to a camera. So the field of view, aspect ratio, log to HND, etc. And then you can simply add the node to the blueprint. Uh, the blueprint is the path that we have right here. The component is the new camera component that we just created. So that's going to be the template. And then you can decide the parent. I'm going to parent my camera to my light component. So that's why I'm using the same name right here. And that's it. Now we have the node that we can return at the end of the function. And now we're done with the code and it's time to jump in Unreal. So in Unreal, I created a new empty blueprint actor in which we can add components. And that's what you can see on the right right here. I have my new empty blueprint actor. It doesn't have anything and accept the default scene root that comes with a new blueprint actor. Unreal creates that root for you. And that's what I have right here. It's just the default scene root. I didn't add anything else inside that blueprint quite yet. We're going to do that using our new functions we created today. And to do that, well, I have my new user interface right here. As usual, I have the path of the blueprint in which I want to add all the different components. And then I have functions to add the scene component, point light component, and camera component. And if I go in the graph, we can see that if I click on those buttons, I'm simply calling the function we created today. So the add scene component, add point light, and also add camera component. So clicking on those buttons should add all those components inside that hierarchy right here. And that's what we're going to test. So I'm going to go here and run my editor utility widget. And then I'm going to create a scene component. Here we go. It replaced the default scene root by my scene component right here. Because that's what I tell Unreal to do in the logic of the function. If the default scene root is still present in the blueprint, I'm going to replace it by the first component I'm creating. So if I delete that component, Unreal is going to re the default scene root. But this time, if I add a camera component, it's going to use my camera component to replace the default scene root. Same thing if I add a point light component. There you go. So Unreal is going to use the first component I'm creating to replace the default scene root if it's still there. But if it's not there, it's just going to create the component as a child of that component. If it doesn't find a parent for that component, which is the case for my scene component, I named the parent to none because I didn't want my scene component to be attached to anything. So it's just going to attach it to the first parent it finds in the hierarchy. So in that case, it's going to be my point light component. And talking about my point light component, if I select it, you can see on the right that all the settings that I applied to the component in the code are still there. So I have my intensity, my light color, my attenuation radius and source radius. They are going to be applied directly to the component. Same thing for the scene component. So I have my transform, I have my visibility right here, and I have my tag right here. So you can see that the settings are really applied to the component. And now we can add, let's say, a camera component. That one is going to attach it to the light component because that's what I decided in the code. And it's also because the light component is the root of the blueprint, obviously. But in this case, it's really just because I wanted my camera component to be attached to my light. So that's why it's attaching it right here. And same thing for the camera component. All the settings are applied properly and you can create as many components as you want. So you can uh, create all those components and it should work. And if you delete all those components, Unreal is going to recreate the defaults in root. So it really works like any other blueprints in Unreal. Now you can add a scene, a point light and a camera. And you can see that the hierarchy is exactly the hierarchy that I wanted to have in the code. So I have my scene component as a root. Then I have my point light and finally my camera component. So yeah, I guess that's going to be it for today's video. You can add as many components as you want. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye bye.